When did the central bank um, become a thing? When was it established? Uh, they were, there was this group of very wealthy people, at least as far as the America side, like JP Morgan and the names that you know that are the <laughs> evils of Wall Street that got together on Jekyll Island outside of Georgia. Jekyll Island? And they created the, the private banks and it's a fractionalized banking system, mm -hmm. which means when you get a check and then you <laughs> deposit that into the bank, then they can take a percentage of that and lend that out, but it's your money, then that gets deposited back in, then they lend it out again. There's just a reserve requirement that's a minimum percentage that has to be staying in there. So the same dollar could be lent over and over and over again. That's fractionalized banking. So the money someone has sitting in their savings account, their checking account. It's not sitting in their checking account or right. savings account. It's right. It's lent out to somebody. It's a wonderful so life. Remember that? In the contract, when we sign up for an account with an establishment. Has anyone ever read that contract? Likely not because it's like a book. I didn't read it. Right. So are they telling us in there that they're then lending out our money? I mean, it, and making it's money a lending on institution. My money? Yeah. I mean, you know, they're basically giving you a teeny bit of interest to rent your money. They don't have a product. And then they turn around and rent that out to someone else for a much higher interest rate. And right now they're paying you very little. A lot of people are getting yeah. a quarter of a percent, yet they're still charging 3%. So think about that. That's like if you could buy a piece of real estate, rent it out for, let's say that you can go get that piece of real estate for 250 bucks a month, but then you could turn around and rent it to someone else for 3000 a month. That's a big markup. Doesn't that seem That's a extreme massive markup? That's why they're so profitable. And by the Stoba. end of the year with the interest rate that they gave me, I can go buy like a pizza. But this isn't even the, the big issue. Celebrate. The bigger issue here is the bigger issue is the federal reserve is giving the U S government money, which they can't be printing. Like we're talking about a stimulus of 1.9 trillion. Can they print 1.9 trillion? in a few months, how, how many printers would that, how many money machines would it take? How much yeah. cotton or whatever would we go through to, to do that? It's just being added to computer screen. So it's almost like the Federal Reserve has an unlimited Venmo account. Oh, would you like it? Yeah, they just Venmo that over with nothing from nowhere. Yeah. Into the gov now the want. government, now the government owes that back to the Federal Reserve. Mm -hmm. So any dollar you have is actually debt to the Federal Reserve. The government doesn't oh, own no, their own currency, Stolba. <laughs> yeah, because our currency is not backed by anything because it used to be backed by the gold standard. Yeah. Then we went to what's known as the fiat system, yep. right? Mm -hmm. So it's not backed by gold. And this is why it's interesting that people, you know, like Janet Yellen said, oh, people that are doing crypto are criminals. Are you kidding me? The U.S. dollar has been the most criminal oriented currency in history mm -hmm. for drug dealing and, and for everything that you could imagine. And we're going to call out this because... I think this is the greatest opportunity for the US government ever to be like, we're gonna go away from central banks. We're going to go and have our own currency with a coin and we're gonna use cryptocurrency because there's 11 properties versus nine that we have with money and there's more transparency and it can be built on a much superior technology and take away the power from the banks because every bank is the biggest building in every city. Mm -hmm. They're bigger than our houses. They have rooms dedicated for their money, Stolba. What the hell goes on in those rooms clear up above? Like, what's even going on in those? At least when I go to Vegas, there's spas and restaurants, nice hotels. I know what's going on in the rooms up above. The high rollers are spending more money and getting comp their rooms so they can waste their cash. But the banks somehow get away with this. And so I, I don't love this system that, we, that we've created because now... The government's asking the Federal Reserve, which is not Federal Reserve, there's a private bank, hey, can we have money that then they give to the citizens that's now owed back to the Federal Reserve and we're close to 30 trillion in debt, 28, and it's just going up while we talk right now. And because interest rates are low, we can afford to finance it, but what if they go up? And when are these eventually gonna be a problem? And like, was there anything created for this other than a system? of exchange yeah. and why didn't the government have their own system of exchange? Well, they initially did. Mm -hmm. And there were presidents that said, if we ever go away from this, it's the end of us. If we give this up to the central banks, this is the end of us. And when we look at fractionalized banking, I think it's created inflation. When we have the government asking for more money and throwing it out to people, it creates inflation. It's unfair for people that are actually out there doing things and producing and saving diligently with their money right. because now their money goes less. It just has less purchasing power. It doesn't quite go as far. And so this is the issue that we're facing and people don't understand what the Federal Reserve is and central banking and privatized banking and fractionalized banking and the, how the government's just coming up with this money and these politicians have no idea of accountability. You don't get $28 trillion in debt without accountability. They're, they have no accountability. Like, what if it was about value creation? What if it was about human beings? What if we saw money for what it was? It's just a means of exchange. Want to master your money? 
Want to figure out the things that you could do to improve your finances? Click here and check out more videos like this on Money Matters.